Coming up on Digital Music Trends 136, we chat about Apple's iTunes radio announcement, Pandora buying a terrestrial radio, the Sony Music Unlimited price drop, 7 Digital's DMCA streaming platform and much more. Hello everyone and welcome to Digital Music Trends, the weekly show where we talk about and make sense of the weekly news in the digital music industry. And the DMT is available on a variety of channels including iTunes, most podcasters, SoundCloud, Mixcloud, TuneIn Radio and Stitcher. And you can stay up to date with the latest shows by subscribing to the weekly newsletter on digitalmusictrends.com. And this week I'm really happy to welcome three great guests on the show once again. Uh, we're pretty spread out uh, so it's going to be an interesting Skype call uh, starting with the closest guest which is uh, Jim Carroll from the Irish Times in Dublin. So hi, Jim, and great to have you on. How's it going? Great, thank you, all good. And then we hop across the pond to New York where we have uh, Clyde Smith from Hypebot joining the show. So hi, Clyde. Hi, um, I'm in North Carolina. Oh, North actually. Carolina, sorry. Yeah, you mentioned that earlier. I just, yeah. I just had it in my, in my prep. <laughs> I had it in my head. <laughs> great. Uh, and uh, finally, from, uh, you know, the furthest away is uh, uh, Alejandro Marin, uh, who looks after the website uh, themusicpimp.com, uh, which is widely popular uh, in uh, Colombia and also the rest of South America. So hi, Alejandro, and great to have you on from Bogota. How are you? Hi, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Great, awesome, great to have you. And it'll be great to hear your perspectives as well on some of the stories uh, when it comes to the South American market as well. So uh, great to have you on. So uh, this week uh, we can get started right away and there's uh, only one news story to rule them all and that is the announcement of uh, iTunes Radio. So uh, this story started breaking about 10 days ago when it was reported by the Financial Times, I believe, uh, that uh, Warner Music and Warner Chapel had reached it with Apple and the company was poised to announce a WWDC. So I was actually pretty skeptical at the time because it seemed an awfully fast uh, timeline but closer uh, to the date we heard of more deals being made uh, until finally Sony ATV uh, closed up the loop of major labels and publishers so uh, you know and announced it was of course uh, but it was left to the last 10 minutes or so of the keynote and Apple didn't seem like they made a massive deal out of it it was part of their you know revamp of the iOS uh, as part of the, the new layout of iTunes uh, and uh, perhaps it didn't make as much a, a, of a big deal of it as we would have uh, thought uh, considering that the company has had uh, such a big uh, play in music over the last uh, 10 years or so and so um, first of all I, was, I wanted to ask you uh, you know did, did you feel like the announcement was understated or underwhelming in, in the way that they deliver the uh, um, the iTunes radio announcement Jim? Um, it, it's it's hard it's hard to know. I mean, it, it was like yeah, I thought the keynote in general yeah, was was fairly ballsy. You know, I mean, they 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 kind of came out and they went womp womp womp. Here you go. You think you you think we're bitches? You think we're gonna lay laying down? Well, this is what we got planned. <laughs> I thought the the new Mac Pro looked amazing. I mean, I want that on my desktop. No. But, so, yeah. but, but when it comes out, it looks incredible. Whether I'd use it for anything other than a goldfish bowl, I don't know. But I want like, him a backpack. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the thing the thing the thing about like the you know, iTunes radio though is that I suppose you got to remember this is the first iteration in a bit of, in, in a long step we've been waiting a long time to hear apple do anything like this and you know when you kind of parse it and you've got to remember that all we're doing right now is extrapolating details from a press release and from an announcement we actually haven't seen it we don't know what it looks like we don't know what the interface is going to be like you know we know what the cost is going to be it's going to be when it's rolled out later on the year that we're going to see we're going to find out the real the real kind of story here whether it was kind of like you know i i i, I think you know when it comes to apple announcements we, we kind of expect the sun the moon the stars and like yeah. you know when they are when they're understated when they don't give you everything you, you expect to get i mean many people were probably expecting like them to get be pitching in r going right up into kind of spotify's grill from the get-go that's not been apple's way we've known from the past so it's like in many ways what they did what they did this week with the announcement was probably tip tip a typical apple play yeah yeah alejandro what was your takeaway from the announcement here well i didn't expect much from it and uh Actually, when once the, like like um, like our colleague in in Dublin says, the, the entire launch was pretty ballsy. But the iTunes radio thing, I found very similar to Pandora, and I think that as the iTunes CEO said a few hours after the the launch, uh, there's going to be a bloodbath. I mean, what's interesting is not what's happening right now with the rollout of the application, but what's going to continue to happen afterwards. What's yeah. going to happen? What's going to you know what kinds of things and consequences will lead after this whole thing happened you know the entire thing of pandora buying a station in south dakota i found very interesting yesterday and i found like it's part of that bloodbath that the uh, tuning ceo said was going to be unleashed after this uh, whole release was happening but in terms of radio and online radio and how this whole big mess is uh, turning out i didn't find it very appealing or interesting particularly 
particularly because I'm not a Mac user. So, you know, I guess we'll have to wait and see what's sure. going to happen. Sure. Uh, Clyde, what was your takeaway from, from the keynote? Um, well, I'm thinking about what both these guys just said. Pretty interesting stuff. Um, you know, there were a lot. I mean, Apple had a lot to announce. And, um, but I think maybe I, I see what you mean about possibly downplaying it a bit. Uh, for me personally, I, I guess it's not it's not just for Mac users, right? Because isn't iTunes available for other platforms, right? So, yeah. I mean, the thing that struck me is that one day I'm going to fire up I, iTunes and suddenly there'll be iTunes Radio sitting right there. Yeah, and that's kind of the big. That's Apple's big advantage. They're on so many people's computers. They won't have to sign up for anything new. Um, it's already, people are already kind of tied into that. Because iTunes is a nice product. I, I've been pretty happy with it. I'm able to buy stuff, put it on there. You know, I burn my CDs that I purchased, of course, and uh, have them all in one space. You know, I get these mixtapes for free. I get you know, people are giving all this free music. That all goes into iTunes. Um, so just adding iTunes radio to the mix. As somebody who uses iTunes regularly, uh, to me, that's the most powerful thing is it's just going to be dropped right into the mix and be good yeah. to go. Yeah, and I, I was thinking about the difference with the, with the Google Play, which is, you know, that you, okay, yeah, you might have the, the, the Google All Access Music service on hundreds of millions of phones out there, but who is actually going to do the step of actually paying for it or, or subscribing to it? And whilst if you, if you have a, an iOS device, you just turn that on and it's going to have that service just built in and you won't have to do anything about it. So that's pretty powerful, I think. And the yeah, pricing just, too, sorry, just quickly, the pricing, yeah. um, it's what, under 25 bucks a year? Uh, just twenty five bucks a year, yeah. And if you, to go yeah. no ads, and then you have iTunes Match. I mean, you get iTunes Match plus iRadio. It's almost like yeah. some of these moves Amazon's been making with, uh, you know, offering their shipping deal. Uh, we have that in the states. I don't know if they do that anywhere else. We have uh, Amazon Prime. You pay an annual fee to get two day shipping with no additional charge when you get that. And then they added their streaming video service to that for free. Yeah. So this ability to once, once these big guys have established something, the ability to keep iterating and offering extra things is really powerful. And Alejandro, you, you were mentioning earlier uh, uh, um, TuneIn. It's an interesting thing, actually, that Apple has always had the um, ability to play uh, radio streams right from iTunes, but that's always kind of been uh, downplayed or you know, kind of hidden there. You know, they could have easily become TuneIn themselves if they wanted to incorporate that type of uh, dis discovery uh, of, of radio stations uh, on the platform, but they never did. Why do you think Apple was never that keen on having uh, traditional radio stations on, on, on the system? I'm not really sure, you know. I think that uh, ideas uh, jump uh, from man to man, like the <laughs> sentence says, like the, like the quote says, and, you know, one of those men grab uh, the idea and turn it into a reality. I think that iTunes is very innovative, very uh, hands-on, and uh, I don't know if you'd agree with me on the fact that it, every single thing that comes out of Apple uh, tends to uh, focus uh, the users and the consumers attention on its mobile product on the iPhone on solidifying it on making it stronger Th therefore what I, you know the entire iTunes radio thing I believe is very attached to that whole idea that music is a part of your mobile environment and of your mobile life but um, I, I'm not you know I don't think that they were that smart or that clever or actually thought about the idea of aggregating stations and making it simpler for the user in terms of mobile. I myself have never used radio on an iPhone. I did have an iPhone a year ago and then I switched to, to Android. But you know what I think is TuneIn just jumped in that idea and they made it possible for people to have, you know, 75 million stations on a mobile hand on, on, on a mobile handset and that's pretty much the big difference and the reason why, you know, I, uh, you know, Apple's not there why they haven't you know developed further the idea and tried to compete with the uh, tuning uh, you know, right up front, I, I'm not really sure. I wouldn't be able to tell you, sure. but I do believe that the entire iTunes radio thing is just uh, 
a way to lure more consumers into buying mobile uh, handsets, more iPhones for them. I think that's going to make them really competitive and real edgy in, this, uh, in these times of streaming. Yeah, and just to, just to, to um, stay with you all for a second, I wanted to ask you about uh, what's happening in South America because, of course, uh, iTunes have, has only been around uh, as, a, as an actual store uh, for music for the past uh, 12 months or so, uh, or, or just less. And uh, so I wanted to ask you, like, uh, what's your feeling about the adoption of the service uh, 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 and and how, what people are making of it? Because, of course, in the, in the US, the MP3 market is already very mature, and that's why uh, Apple has to get into the streaming business because they need to sort of revitalize the sales of MP3s as well and make sure that people still have it firmly in, 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 their, in, their, in their mind. But in South America, what is happening for you uh, and, and in Colombia for, uh, specifically? Well, Colombia is just getting started into the entire mobile revolution. As you said, iTunes just came in about a year ago and things are looking up. You know, the, the, the consumer is very, uh, I would say that he's very grateful for the fact that he can now download songs via his mobile, via his uh, iTunes account on his uh, desktop computer and whatnot. Uh, but it's still a matter of, uh, you know, Consumers who have uh, money, consumers who are able to have a good credit history, consumers who are have access to a credit card. That it's not it's not a very massive medium. Yeah. Therefore, even though the major labels are very happy with what's going on, and it's been able to give uh, a lot of traction to the entire international front line Anglo artists, which were pretty much you know out of the picture because this is a very tropical zone and local artists rule on the radio well now international artists have a possibility to be selling their stuff whereas when we were doing the whole cd thing you know people just didn't have enough money to go out and and, and they weren't really interested in going out and buying you know i don't know a Nicki minaj uh, cd or a, or a maroon 5 cd now people can actually go in there and buy a track they don't have to buy the entire cd so the, it's it, things are looking up it's looking pretty interesting we're going to see if itunes uh, you know, makes the decision to uh, get the car and put them on the grocery stores and stuff and like the gift cards and that would give it much more traction since you know this is a very poor population it's not you know we, we have a, we have a pretty interesting like high class system going on and it, it would it i would say it's like 25 percent of the population and then the rest you know it's like middle class or low class people who don't really have access or are not really interested or maybe very trepidatious of using the system System right now because of the entire credit card fraud so things are looking up it's going to be an interesting deal and now with the whole thing of Deezer and streaming coming in it looks even more interesting yeah absolutely yeah. and Gemma just to close on Apple I want to talk about data so uh, well, yeah. what is your feeling about you know uh, Apple is talking about you know 575 million accounts mm -hmm. most with credit cards uh, also they've had the genius feature and you know they've been able to monitor what people are playing uh, on iTunes for years now so huge uh, backlog of data of course we don't know how they've organized it or what kind of history they've, they've kept track of uh, over the years uh, but about I mean, you, if, you want, if you want to know that just ask the NSA you know I mean they probably got, that. <laughs> they probably got, got a special <laughs> 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 That, that story has to work itself in everything, doesn't it? <laughs> it should. It should right now. It should. Uh, it's, a, it's, a very, it's a very interesting point. It's a very interesting point, Andrea, about about data, and especially especially kind of like going on to something that the other two lads have been talking about as well. Is that like where the, the, you also got to remember where Apple are going to go with this? Because as you, you're talking about, the, say, the MP3 market in the states, the, the pay for download market maturing, right? If something like this matures and more and more of the mainstream, let, let's, let's forget about all the music fans, like our, 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 our serious music fans. Let, let's talk with ordinary music fans, those Maroon 5 fans, those are like mainstream music fans, as they get more and more hip to make to streaming and realize the money they can save from streaming. Someone like Apple are going to be looking at kind of like I mean dilution of revenue on two or three different different fronts. First of all, it's going to be the dilution in terms of loss of revenue from the iTunes store for those 99 cent downloads. Second of all, it's like I mean we, we, we've seen we've seen the death now of the iPod market. I mean the iPod, iPod is gone, so it's over. So I mean if they want to sell more gadgets, which we also we all know is Apple's basically bottom line in all this. If they want to sell more iPhones or whatever, they've got like a kind of build things in like build things into that. Are we going to see them kind of like I mean doing things like iTunes Radio like 
Nokia's Come with Music, for example. I mean, this is this is what I'm kind of saying about like this this move with iTunes with with iTunes and Apple. It's the first step. You know, they they are as Mark Mulligan was kind of pointing out in his blog post this week. They are a cautious company, but you can bet that they've mapped out in their heads where all this is going to go. And as you're kind of saying, five five hundred seventy five million accounts with credit cards attached. I mean, that's a serious number of, of, of that's a serious amount of of of, of, of people who will like me will, will immediately kind of look at something like this for twi- for twenty five bucks a year as well. I mean, that's a that's pretty good. That's a pretty good price point as well compared to Spotify or Deezer. And it's also very interesting that most of the kind of like I suppose the consumer press leading on leading on this hasn't really kind of copped the fact that we're talking about radio here. We're not. They, they they seem to kind of like it seems to be a kind of a complication or a kind of a I suppose a deliberate misunderstanding that like iTunes Radio has been seen almost like a streaming service like Spotify or like Deezer. It's not really. We're talking about hundreds of radio channels, which I mean when it sounds when you think about hundreds of radio channels, things you you think that's quite a lot. But when you look at the fact that something like Spotify or Deezer have got millions and millions of tracks that people can access that easily. It remains to be seen where this is going to go, but I think they, given what Apple have, given the ease of use of their products, I mean, like you no, know, like even if you're not very technical, like my my my, my seventy something year old mother, she picks up an Apple Apple product, she can use it straight out of the box. They're so yeah. intuitive. They've got that. They've got that mainstream audience already tapped into. It. And something like iTunes Radio is just going to be, is is just going to be gangbusters to this crowd. Yeah. And Clyde, anything further to add on data, or are, are you good? No, I think uh, that wrapped it. Tim wrapped it up really Great. well. Awesome. <laughs> uh, and so, uh, is it is it going to? Is it going to? I just got a question. Yeah, sure. Don't you guys get the feeling that the entire streaming thing is is, is kind of like I was reading something about about this yesterday on some techie blog, but don't you get the feeling that maybe people are getting confused with the entire new radio thing on digital? I mean, it's like what you were saying a, a, a minute ago. I agree with you on that. I mean, the iTunes thing is pretty powerful. They got the 400 million credit card database, which is going it's definitely huge. They're going to make it easier for people to get closer to their music and to be able to stream it. But I I just, I just still think that you know, these are streaming services, and we're calling it radio. Why are we calling it radio? You know, it, it, I don't. It doesn't seem like radio to me at all. You know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I guess I that's, think, um, that's, that's a in, legacy, here, isn't it? Yeah. And I mean, isn't it also like it's radio if you don't pick the tracks, and it's streaming if you can. That's right. Yeah, that's right. And there's yeah. in that kind of the big difference. So yeah, that's right. Actually, you know, it, that kind of ties into a story I was going to talk about later on, but I can bump it up in the lineup. And and it was about Seven Digital's uh, announcement of this week, which was about uh, the uh, announcing a DMCA compliant streaming radio platform in the U.S. So uh, that's what uh, Alejandro was, was talking about. Uh, um, the fact that it's DMCA compliant. So uh, the fact is that to be a, a streaming service that does uh, you know streaming radio uh, in the US and in most territories uh, in, in Europe and I think around the world, there are very specific rules as to uh, how that happens. So you, you can only allow a certain amount of, of skips, for example. It can only be personalized to a certain degree uh, because otherwise it becomes on demand. And so if it becomes on demand, the, the rates go up and you have to get a different set of rights. So what 7Digital did by creating this uh, uh, platform, this this API that is already DMCA compliant is uh, they are allowing uh, um, startups, for example, to go and license uh, this API so that they can create a service that is already compliant because it has to be in order to to use the API, uh, but they can build on top of that and create a service without having to worry about uh, the licenses. So that's a, I think that's a, that's a really interesting proposition. And there are uh, Seven Digital is already working in this space with uh, uh, Double Twist for Magic Radio on Android, Senzari for Wawa, uh, Turntable FM, Peaky, and Sourcestone. So uh, I think that's a pretty interesting play that. The Seven Digital is doing by providing a, a, a platform where people can base themselves on and create something from. Uh, I don't know, Clyde. What, what's your take on Seven Digital's latest move in the US? Um, you know, I haven't. I mean, my knowledge of what they're doing is pretty superficial. Yeah, it sounds really powerful. I, you know, the more like the more news that comes out, the more I would just hate to be one of these guys competing in this space yeah. because it's like new stuff keeps happening. It's like, it's hard to, I, I can't keep up really very well at all. And I would hate to be the guy trying to beat these other guys. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely difficult. Uh, 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 Jim, do you have a, do you have a take on, on this? I think, I think it's a I powerful think what, thing. I think, what, 
I think what Clyde just said goes for it because basically, you know, there's so much new stuff com- coming out every week. You know, all, all of us here, like I me, mean, we read the blogs, we're on all the different mail lists, we're on Twitter, we're seeing these stories kind of coming bam, 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 bam. And it's really interesting that, like, you know, the Apple story is the big, like, I, I write for a, a, a daily newspaper here in Ireland, and the Apple story is the first big one that, like, I me, mean, commissioners are kind of going, whoa, what's the story here? What's going on with this? It's yeah. like all these other things are just. The little changes, the little, the little ideas, you know, I mean, it, it, it's almost like small startups in a way, you know, it has to reach a, a, a certain critical mass before it, it, it takes off. And so like this story, yeah, it's really, really cool. But like, you know, it's kind of like, what's this guy do with the price of, or price of milk? You know what I mean? It's, like, it's, it's almost like yeah. that. Where, where, where is this leading in the greater scheme of things? And like, you know, if they are, if, if you're talking about radio and you, you're talking about a really, really big business, you're talking about a business that like, I mean, like, you know, as we all know, should like, should like of kind of like, you know, clear channel or whatever. It's been around for a, a long Long time and it's very it's very heavily regulated as well so if someone like seven digital are going to move into that space you know or partner with people in that space they need to kind of like mean take it through and they need to be they, they, they'll be spending money on things that they weren't spending on when they were starting out back in the uk i think the other thing that makes me really excited about this particular service is, is the fact that right now it's really like a, a you know a, a big guy's play so whether you're a startup you, you need to have a, a massive amount of in, 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 you know, a massive injection initially to actually get started into the space mm-hmm. or I'll spend a huge amount of time and 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 worry a lot about licensing uh, uh music even just for 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 a radio for internal radio play uh whilst with this you know you can sort of encourage innovation because you have companies that can come in that have less funding but that have a great idea and then they can make a deal with seven digital to get this catalog and they can actually get started pretty quickly and you know test at least test their idea because you know a lot of these companies now build a whole interface and do the deals even before of course they launch because they have to have the rights for the music and then they don't even know if the idea is going to be something that flies or not so in, in this case uh, i'm excited about the innovation possibilities that are going to happen with this particular api platform but um uh, sure yeah, it would, be, it would be interesting to know what the view of conventional radio is on this, because yeah. I mean, that, like, I mean, this. After all, you know, you, someone like Seven Digital. If you're sitting in a conventional radio station's boardroom or a, a, a radio company's boardroom, you're kind of looking at Seven Digital. You think these guys kind of trying to eat our lunch, you know? I mean, you 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 want you want to see you want to kind of like see see how it looks from their point of view as well. And like, I mean, there have been some innovative ideas coming from radio, but in the most in the most places, like the like the record labels, they're just trying to like I mean protect their neck. Right. It, look, I, I can tell you what's happening in the boardrooms of conventional radios because I work for one here in Colombia. And the, the vision that people have here is uh, very primitive as opposed to the vision that, uh, you know, giants like Clear Channel have. However, you know, many of the people in the boardrooms on conventional radio here are very prepared and, you know, they studied abroad and they kind of understand what's going on. But in terms of music radio, many of them are very skeptical of what's going to happen with stream and online radio, particularly with situations such as Pandora, situations such as, I don't know, Spotify or Deezer, where you have, you know, you know, uh, 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 75 million uh, users in the U.S. and you have the possible growth in stocks and things like that. And then, you know, you know, the, the big boys at the boardrooms, you know, strike right back saying, well, but, you know, the CEO just got fired. So what does that mean, you know? And another thing that I've seen from uh, big C radio CEOs here uh, is uh, the skepticism towards the big uh, numbers of, uh, uh, you know, the disappearance of the user. I, I don't. There's a particular n- name for that when you go inside a platform and you turn into a you turn a subscription, but you never come back. But I I, I forget the churn. I forget the name. The, the, yeah, churn. Yeah, churn right. the, 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 the amount of churn that's happening right now on the on on the big streaming platforms is also one thing why big CEOs on radio are not very concerned and feel like the commercial model of the entire streaming platforms does not work. Is this going to change with iTunes and uh, iTunes Radio and their big 400 million credit card database? Maybe. I don't know. If that happens, well, you know, good for them. But, you know, you have Deezer with uh, 73% of churn. You have Spotify with 70% churn. And I'm not really sure the radio says, you know, that 
you know, radio looks at that and they say, well, you know, it's not really, it's not really working. On the, on the other hand, you have Clear Channel trying to stop the big, uh, the big giant that Pandora has turned into and creating their own iHeart radio and playing by the rules of terrestrial radio on digital radio as well, you know. So it's quite an interesting field yeah. and it's definitely a bloodbath uh, to <laughs> about, about to turn, you know, really ugly. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. And, uh, you know, fittingly, I think now it's, it's, uh, it's uh, Pandora's story turn and this is a quite a, it's quite a complex story uh, from, from a rights perspective. So I'm just going to try and boil it down uh, as as uh, well as I possibly can. So um, Pandora, you know, of course they released a fairly dry statement after the iTunes radio announcement uh, about the fact that it's just another player coming into the space, of course. <laughs> uh, but uh, the, the really interesting story is what Alejandro talked about uh, just uh, um, earlier at the beginning of the show, which is uh, the acquisition of a terrestrial radio from Rapid Springs, South Dakota called uh, KXMZFM. So the move was announced in an op-ed by Pandora's Assistant General Counsel Christopher Harrison on the Hills Congress blog. And in the piece uh, Harrison openly, uh, openly admits that the acquisition is squarely aimed at allowing Pandora to qualify for the Radio Licensing Marketing Committee agreements with ASCAP and BMI. So these agreements allow for terrestrial broadcasters to obtain preferential rates for their internet uh, properties and, and radios. So apparently 16 out of 20 of Pandora's competitors qualify for this uh, uh, special rate and uh, licenses, including iHeartRadio, as of course the Clear Channel owns uh, terrestrial radios. And so... Uh, uh, Pandora thought, well, we're going to buy a terrestrial radio, become a terrestrial broadcaster, and then we can qualify for these new rates. So it's kind of a sneaky way of going around, uh, getting around this uh, this uh, limitation and this what they call an un unjust uh, sort of uh, uh, competition problem. Because uh, of course, uh, iHeart Radio is a very direct competitor to Pandora. Uh, also, you know, the, the op-ed called uh, um, the called ASCAP for allowing. Uh, uh, publishers to take away their digital rights uh, and said that it's violated the terms of its antitrust consent decree with the De Department of Justice. So of course, we all know about the problem of direct licensing now in the United States. So for example, Sony ATV took away its uh, the digital rights from uh, ASCAP and decided to do direct deals with Pandora. This put Pandora, of course, in a, in a tight spot because they had to get Sony ATV's rights in order to continue having the catalog that they have. And uh, so Sony ATV, from, from the reports that we had a few months ago, managed to increase their rates by 25%, which of course, it doesn't make Pandora happy. So uh, this is all uh, fairly messy for Pandora. Of course, they have the publishers community on the one side, which is actually a small part of their, uh, it takes up a, a much smaller part of the revenues than the recorded side, which is handled by SoundExchange. So uh, Clyde, what do you make of all this uh, Pandora mess? You know, that it seems like that they're, they're picking battles on all, front, uh, on all fronts. You know, they're trying to lower the rates uh, from SoundExchange uh, through Congress, and they're also uh, picking up a fight with ASCAP uh, on, on, on the publisher's rates. Well, man, they're keeping a lot of lawyers busy, definitely. <laughs> um, what a mess. I, uh, I actually, I'm impressed by the buying the terrestrial radio station move. I always like moves like that. I don't think that's sneaky. I mean, it's, oh, yeah, sure. you know, that's a game. It has, mm. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, it's, uh, I thought it was really smart. If it works, I, I don't understand enough about the legal side of it and, you know, to know how that'll, what that will actually allow them to do. Um, I mean, maybe, the, maybe, it's, they, it's, maybe, maybe they see the sort of like, I mean, like it, it, when AOL bought Warners, you know, we all know that worked out. See? Oh, he how, meant, he's talking about when AOL bought Time Warner. And oh, then, okay. Yeah. That was, but isn't this just one small station? Like one small yeah, this is just station. one small station. So essentially, it's it's a way for them to be able to enact this uh, uh, RMLC um. agreement, so that because they are they become a terrestrial broadcasters by means of this, uh, their digital uh, rate in internet radio rates automatically get lowered because of that. Uh, is it if they get to do that, if they get to do that, I mean, I think that's one of the brightest, yeah. you know, yeah. legal moves ever. You know, <laughs> the fact that they just bought, you know, they bought a station in the two hundred and fifty fifth. Uh, 
uh, market, like the 255th most important market, uh, according to Arbitron. I mean, it, they service 70,000 people, but they have 49,000 subscribers and they service 70 million subscribers in the U.S. and they're going to get, you know, uh, clear channel treatment. I think that's very smart. Yeah. That's very yeah. smart. <laughs> Everyone's going to copy them. Every single every single other player in the market is going to copy them, you know, because that's, the, that's the best thing right now. Within 10 days, even more lawyers are going to be paying for their kids to go to college because of this. You know they're gonna. Everyone's gonna be hiring lawyers, looking around for more, more for more stations to buy in the two hundred fifty six, two hundred fifty seven, and two hundred fifty eight most important markets. It's a it's a brilliant move. But as with anything like this, there's no real, I suppose, first mover first mover advantage because everyone else can jump in straight away if they've got the money to spend and if there are radio stations for sale. Yeah, and I guess uh, a lot of those radios in, in that uh, 256, 7, and 8 range are probably licking their fingers, hoping for big <laughs> checks to come in yeah. <laughs> from <laughs> internet radio companies. Uh, uh, and uh, now it's, it's interesting, and it's interesting that they actually put out a blog post uh, that explained point by point what they did and why they were doing it, because you know they could have easily tried to do it without really making a point of it. But the fact that they actually did release this big you know, uh, op-ed where you know the the business affairs guy talks about exactly why they went about doing it and why they're doing it. I think that that's an interesting, uh, quite ballsy move. Uh, I, right, yeah. right. Well, I, you know what? You know what I think? I think that uh, I think that they've uh, they they pretty much went after Pandora for some particular. They've gone after Pandora for some particular reason. I guess it's their subscriber base. I'm yeah. not really sure how it works down uh, in the states, but you know, ASCAP and, and BMI have done some pretty shitty things to those guys. You know, in terms of, of you know, like the the withdrawal of a catalog last year by BM by by EMI. You know, I yeah, thought that was a very yeah, that, that, that was a very that's a quite a complicated field because I actually spoke to. Uh, uh, ASCAP and BMI's uh, CEOs last week in Washington, and uh, <laughs> uh, they were explaining to me that uh, the the re in the US uh, the the licensing agreements with the collection societies work differently than in, Euro in Europe. So that means that uh, they don't have exclusivity uh, over the whole portion of the rights, like they do, for example, uh, a, a PRS does in in the UK or SASM does in France. So. Uh, from what they told me, they, they couldn't do anything about the publishers withdrawing their rights. And the problem is that the, the, the rates that are set for companies like ASCAP and BMI are set by a tribunal in the United States. So they can't mm -hmm. really uh, move too much from those set points, uh, point rates that were set by, um, uh, by the tribunal. And the problem is that the big publishers think that those uh, price points are too low. So that's why they decided to take the digital rights away and go and do a direct deal with the the, right. the digital providers. Uh, yeah, but, so but, but, so but, but, but but what they could do is actually let uh, uh, Pandora know which of those songs are withdrawn. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Of course. I mean, the problem is that I, I, as well. I mean, I've dealt with publishers as yeah. well, and I, I have the feeling that a lot of the major publishers would have a very hard time pinpointing exactly all the like a list of tracks where they own rights. <laughs> I know it sounds crazy, but uh, from from the conversations yeah, that's that I've had, crazy, yeah. yeah, from the conversations that I've had, I think if you if you went to like I don't know any of the majors and you asked them a complete list of all the tracks where they own rights of, if you wanted to withdraw them from a, from a, an internet radio service, uh, they will have a pretty hard time actually giving you that list. So <laughs> I don't know, but that's that's another interesting point. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, I think I think that the entire thing of of you know the the major music industry is has gone hard after Pandora, and you know, if uh, I'm not really, I, I think that they all depend on money. I think they're all looking the, for 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 our money. You know, all those of us who are into music and who have been into music, whether it's music collecting, CD collecting, vinyl collecting, and now downloads and now streaming, they're they're all after the money. But um, I think. That it, it, if money is what's driving them uh, to disrupt technologies, to disrupt industries, then you know money should be also the leveling factor in terms of legal, and yeah. they should all be treated equally. So that's why I think that whether or not this whole thing of the terrestrial radio in South Dakota works for Pandora, I think it's a very interesting move and a very smart one. And if it comes out all right, if if it really is this big legal loophole that it appears to be, it's going to be a very interesting fight. Yeah, absolutely. And 
and like I, like Alejandro said about money as well. I mean, that brings us back to like I mean, where we came in with Apple and, and and iTunes Radio. I mean, do we? Does anyone know yet what the deals were that they struck with the, with the majors and publishers, and like were they better than the deals that the majors and publishers struck with like Deezer and Spotify? You know, I mean, that's a cat that I can't wait to see coming out of the bag because then we kind of know exactly who has got the power in that particular relationship. Was it Apple or was it the labels? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And talking about prices, actually, uh, we can tie into the last story of the show today, which uh, uh, is going to be about Sony Sony Entertainment. So, uh, of course, this week was actually a, a, a massive week for announcements because uh, uh, Microsoft had the Xbox announcement and uh, uh, Sony had their PS3 announcement. Uh, you know, Apple had their own. So it was like it was really a crazy Monday and Tuesday uh, for for people that work in technology uh, industries. And Sony actually uh, snuck in uh, uh, into their announcement. A slashing of the annual subscription for the Music Unlimited digital streaming service, which is actually powered by uh, Omniphone, uh, which is a third-party company, uh, and this is going to be for a limited time. Uh, and the PlayStation Plus members in the UK and Europe will be able to get a service for just forty-one pounds ninety-nine, uh, a drop from one hundred and twenty pounds a year, which is equivalent to what Spotify is. Uh, whilst in the US, this is going to drop uh, to forty-one dollars ninety-nine per year, uh, which is only three three dollars fifty a month. Uh, and uh, okay, you have to be a Sony uh, premium subscriber for that, uh, a PlayStation Plus subscriber for that. Um, uh, am I correct? Uh, and uh, uh, but even if you aren't, uh, apparently you know the, you're going to be able to get uh, the service in the US for uh, just under sixty dollars a year. So this is a pretty serious uh, competition for uh, uh, you know uh, subscription streaming uh, streaming services on demand because uh, uh, Spotify of course charges 120 pounds or 120 dollars a year and and so does audio and it's it's pretty much a fixed price point apart from move uh, by cricket uh, you know the, there's really no not much getting around that uh, 10 dollars 10 pounds a month price point so uh, what do you guys think about this price drop is sony taking a hit to promote the Sony, uh, you know, unlimited service and the PlayStation itself, and uh, why would they push it so hard and take a loss on music, especially? Uh, uh, Jim, do you have any thoughts on that? I suppose the, the thing that struck me was just the timing of it. I mean, the fact that this this wasn't this came out the same week that Apple were making their big announcement. You know, Apple were getting all the big noise. I, was, I, I kind of think there's two reasons there. One, are they trying to steal their thunder, or two, are they trying to like as as with the as with the great thing in all governments when the best day to release bad news is the day when there's another big news story going on. Yeah. Is, is there some reason there? I mean, can we actually no. can we actually mine down into the figures and see what's going on? See what's going on here? You know, I mean, like I, I'll, I'll be quite, I'll be quite honest. You know, I mean, like again, it goes back to something we kind of talked about earlier on. The fact that there's so many of these kind of stories going on that like it comes it comes down to kind of like I mean, what does the consumer want? What is the consumer going to go for? And in most cases, you know, we're, again, we're, we're seeing this really really big divide between the mainstream music fan and like I mean the really dogged determined music fan. That dogged determined music fan, he or she, their battles are raving fought. They know. What they're looking for, they're going to go out and buy vinyl, or they're going to go, they're going to stick with like, a premium service and Spotify or Deezer because they, they, that, that's what they're getting. The battle is done right now for the, the, the not the, for the mainstream music fan and yeah. like something like Sony's thing. This is where they're playing into. It. They have, they have, the, they have the PlayStation. They've got the gadgets already in people's houses. It's about selling more. It's about selling more shit with that gadget. That that that's really what it comes down to in my mind. And it's just, it just kind of struck me as kind of odd. I mean, if it had come out last week, they probably got a lot more play out of it. If it came out yeah. next week, they're probably getting a lot, lot more play out. Of it. And like you know, it's just everyone's attention was. Taken up this week with what's going on with, with, with Apple, that like you didn't really have time to kind of like compute there was something else going on. I don't know. I, I thought it was a bit of a silly move by the, on, on their behalf to pick this week of all weeks to announce something like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Clyde, do you have any 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 points on the price? And do you think being in the US that uh, this could attract more people into the into the uh, music unlimited uh, ecosystem? Um. Wow. Well, I don't. I don't. I don't know. I don't have a good sense of. Uh, like what's happening with the PlayStation and yeah. these kind of home, you know, these consoles and these home units. And it also gets into this whole, you know, this whole move that everybody's trying to make into the living room or the TV room or, you know, everybody's developing um, new things there. So, for instance, introducing a music service, um, to get somebody to tie into your gadget that there is going to be part of the home environment. I mean, there, there might well be a reasonable uh, tactic or maybe even a strategy there. Yeah. Um, so uh, beyond that, I don't know. I think that's uh, um, uh, an interesting area, but uh, in terms of the living room, the battle for the 
TV room, whatever. Yeah. Um, also, I was just uh, did a quick look. I guess it's because they announced this week because of was it E3 the big uh, yeah yeah the big tech conference. But see, that's like I think even if you didn't have Apple, when those tech co- conferences happen, there's so or you know particularly the consumer oriented ones. There are so many announcements that. Um, a lot of it does get lost. It's really hard to process. So. Yeah, I think unless you are like a um, a proper gamer and you are very interested in this in these consoles coming out, which a lot of people True. are, I'm sure, then you do probably paid more attention to that than to Apple's announcement. But but I think it it all depends on on what your interests are. And and Alejandro, you were talking about um, the the fact that you know uh, iPhone is a fairly is a fairly new uh, you know thing and in terms of the iTunes store as well uh, coming on for, for just uh, just over a year but in terms of PlayStation do you see a bigger play there because i know that uh, Sony Music Unlimited actually launched in a few uh, countries in Latin America uh, last month uh, and i was yeah. wondering whether maybe there's a broader uh, distribution of uh, services like uh, of consoles than there is of uh, for example iPhones yeah, I, I, you know what I think, you know, Sony's been around for quite a while as a distributor, you know, Apple's only been here as a reseller, you know, all, yeah. all we got here is premium resellers, you know, of I, uh, MacBooks and things like that, and people are fans of Apple, you know, they really have, uh, uh, you know, they're, they're passionate about the product, but yeah. Sony's been around for quite a while, ever since, you know, transistor radios, they've been around. So, you know, the, the, you know, Sony's a traditional brand for Latin Americans. Yeah. So I think that their penetration possibilities are much easier for mainstream uh, masses and for, for mainstream audiences than uh, an Apple product would be. They, uh, as of late, uh, they've gotten a lot into sports. You know, they've gotten a lot into soccer. Yeah. Uh, they, yeah. they, you know, I, th- I, believe, I believe that they were sponsors of the last World Cup in South Africa, one of the four mm-hmm. major sponsors. They're going to be major sponsors in Brazil. There's a lot at stake for them in terms of what's going to happen uh, with their products. They, they're very aggressive. They know Latin America loves them. They know Latin America recognizes them. So they know they have a shot. And they have a big gaming community when it comes to PS3 and PS4. Yeah. And I think that they got all it takes to win in this market. Xbox... Uh, uh, would be the next competitor, but it's not as big or as strong, like I said, in terms of traditional tradition and, and you know brand goodwill. You know, yeah. I, th- I think that they're you know they just did a they just did a consumer oriented event in one of the uh, shopping malls here in Bogota, and it was very successful. It was very important. It was very talked about, and uh, they w- are going to continue to be on on the top of mind of the consumer here in Latin America. It's going to be interesting. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. That's great. Well, I think that brings us about to the end of the show, but I wanted to ask you guys, uh, uh, first of all, to if you have anything that you wanted to plug, uh, starting uh, with uh, Jim, anything your end, uh, or otherwise just your if, you, if your details for uh, Twitter or for your, for your uh, uh, Irish Times presence as well. The, uh, the, the hardest question of all, last question, what like, what's the plug? <laughs> just, 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 check out, just check out the on the, on the record blog, irishtimes.com forward slash OTR. Okay, great, perfect, awesome. Well, well, and uh, Clyde, uh, um, of course, uh, hypebot.com, uh, anything else you're in? Uh, you know, the kind of the big, the side thing, I'm, I've got some kind of offline things, writing I'm working on, but I'm... Uh, posting regularly about music crowdfunding on twitter like little just links out to all the news i can find about specifically about music crowdfunding not campaigns so much but uh, different articles and stuff and that's at crowdfunding m the letter m okay great awesome so yeah cool uh, follow that and alejandro anything you're in there of course you can uh, plug your website or anything else you're doing yeah, well, you know, I'm on I'm on the radio all the time, so you can check me out at uh, La X Mas Musica, which is L A X M A S M U S E C A dot com. That's okay. that's where you'll find me. That's awesome. And I, I know that we have a, a, a some base uh, in uh, from Spain to to Latin America, so I'm sure they'll be able to tune in, and and also LA, so we'll be able to check you out from there. 
Oh, uh, that's cool. great. Well, right. thanks so much, guys. Cool. It was absolutely great having you on. And uh, thanks so much for listening. Digital Music Trends is uh, available uh, on all sorts of formats, as I mentioned at the beginning. And uh, there's also another show called the DMT One to One Show, uh, where I chat to individual startups and, and companies on their digital marketing projects. Uh, also, check out uh, youtube.com slash digital music trends, where there's over 90 interviews that I did since January at various events. Uh, so, individual interviews with uh, different companies. And so, that's probably a good place to start if you're looking for some more content thanks so much for listening have a great week and till next time and that's all for this week i really hope you enjoyed the show check out digitalmusictrends.com and sign up to the weekly newsletter